Welcome friends of the Greasy Shop Rag. Today we're going to take a look at pressure and vacuum testing a Husqvarna 545 chainsaw. So right off the bat a lot of you are thinking, uh, what the heck is he talking about pressure testing? What is that all about? Well two cycle engines require a sealed crankcase in order to properly function and properly lubricate the bearings. You know they're not like a uh, dirty, filthy, disgusting four-cycle engine that swims in its own filth. They have oil mixed in the gas and you need that to stay at uh, correct proportions as it moves through the engine and not lean out uh, and score cylinders or wreck bearings, whatever. You also need a tight crankcase in order for the air-fuel mixture to remain constant and not be compromised or leaned out because of a leak. So sometimes when we have running issues we pressure and vacuum test these things and sometimes for warranty purposes we have to pressure test them after the fact, after something's happened and, and we're trying to make a claim. So here you can see that I've removed the muffler and I'm preparing to block off the exhaust, block off the intake, and set up an adapter to pump air into this machine. Uh, let me get caught up here. What am I doing? So we got the muffler off, and now we're going to remove the carburetor. This air filter holder plastic assembly. Two gallons uh, it's kind of wedged feet. in there a little in, bit and three point spray sometimes right. it can be uh, a little difficult to sneak it out of there but uh, you know first we got these rubber mounts that it's locked into Ooh. how many gallons did you spray and then we got to kind of move the whole carburetor and filter box up yeah. and sneak it out of there Looks like I, I'm removing right now the tank vent line that goes into the filter holder. Right. I agree with that. So there we just got to clear that orange section there and then pull it apart. I don't know why I'm fumbling with this damn thing. Still got the screws in there. We'll get them out of the way. There we go. That's a fuel return line that's coming from the primer bulb. We want to get that out of the way just so we can move this filter holder off to the side. What's left? Uh, the, the throttle cable. This isn't really that big a deal. It's just a, a little cable locked into the throttle cam. Once we've got that unhooked, we can just pop the carburetor right off Stripes. of that. You notice some wires that are still on it. That's part of the auto tune system on this chainsaw. This exact procedure is going to be the same for the 545, 550, 562, 572. First, we're going to install these plugs into the ports that make this a stratified charged engine. We have to block those off. Then we're going to put a plate over the front of the main intake. Now here I realized I grabbed the wrong plate, so we're going to go grab the right one. And again, in this video I'm using all Husky factory plates and adapters because I have them. You'll notice also that I keep the screws with the plates. It's saved me a lot of time doing it this way. Otherwise I was always looking for the right screws to use. So once we get this put together, we're going to be looking to pump air into the crankcase. That adapter right there is what I'm going to hook my Mighty Vac 8500 vacuum pressure pump up to the engine with. Um, the idea is to put seven pounds of pressure in the crankcase and see if it'll hold. Now Husqvarna gives some specs pump it up to seven pounds 
it shouldn't drop more than a pound after the first minute and no more than four pounds after four minutes or something I don't remember because basically if it's tight it's tight if it's not then it's not and you go in and fix it if it loses four pounds in four minutes and they say that's the bottom edge of acceptable it's uh, way in the basement of acceptable for me it's obviously got a leak and it should be tight when we do the vacuum test we're gonna pull seven pounds seven inches of mercury and the same standards it shouldn't lose more than one inch of mercury in the first minute and no more than four in four minutes which again is too much in my opinion so this uh, lousy footage you're looking at right now is me installing the block off plate off over the exhaust port I think later in the video you get a better shot of that plate there's other ways to do this you could sandwich a rubber wedge in between the muffler and the cylinder and seal it off but again I'm using the factory tools so that's how we're gonna do it pump it up to seven pounds of pressure the piston should be down below the transfer ports for this if it's not usually the seven pounds pushes it down there anyway that allows the pressure to get to all parts of the crankcase intake um, then we're gonna pull seven inches of mercury on the vacuum side let it sit for five minutes you know normally I'll I'll get it to the seven reading on the meter and then I'll go eat lunch or take a dump or whatever if I come back it's not on seven then I start getting out mister bubbles and squirting it around and looking for leaks if it is then I just call it good and move on so here in, in this test I've determined that the crankcase is tight and it's not an issue this was actually a saw we took in on trade and part of making sure it's uh, worthy of resale is to make sure it doesn't have an air leak now we don't do this test for you know low-budget saws not saying this is a top-end saw but some of the auto-tune models you know they can compensate for an air leak and you won't even know it so we go in and we check and make sure they don't have an air leak uh, we're not interested in earning a reputation of selling junk saws so here I'm just cleaning it up a little bit because like I said we're going to resell this one. And then it's a matter of just uh, doing everything backwards the other direction. Put the car back on, put the muffler back on. Oh, got the wrong bit in there again. Never fails. So again, we're going to keep these screws together with our block off plates. It just seems to be a much better system. I've wasted so much time looking around for the right screws for these. Put that little gasket back in the filter holder, which I should point out, uh, that's an older style filter holder. They new, now have a new one that uh, uses a screw down filter. There were some issues with dirt sneaking past the the seal on these and uh, I've seen some of them come through that looked really bad so we gotta untangle this little bit of mess we made here get everything kinda oriented that little nipple right there that is the fuel inlet so we gotta get that lined up with the the hose there's a little holder for the hose next to the air intake we get that snapped into place we'll get that filter holder dropped in where it belongs kill switch wiring has got to be routed down below the carburetor 
And this is another one of them deals where you just got to kind of work it a little bit, wiggle it around. Eventually everything will line up and snap in place and you'll feel it right there. And then you can uh, start and put things back together. So I don't know what's taking this guy so long to do this. That was bullshit. Yeah, let's go. So right now I'm doing something, uh, making a rookie mistake here that most guys will do the first time. That spring right there that I'm showing you, it's got to be underneath that that chrome peg right there for the choke linkage so we're just gonna go ahead and loosen those filter holder screws back up or carved screws whatever you want to call them just enough so we can get that spring below that pin right there now after we tighten these screws back up you'll see that the stop switch functions properly spring loaded when you push it down like that there you have it Tighten the screws up. I thought I wanted to put that uh, filter holder back in place, but we're going to put the tank vent back on first. Now the fuel return hose from the primer bulb. And this is one of those things that you could kind of get uh, snapped into place before you bolt the, the filter holder box in place. I'm kind of struggling with it right now because I didn't do that. And yeah, it is what it is. I mean, you went to got a good shot of it on video anyway. But here you do get a good shot of the uh, block off plate on the exhaust port. Just a chunk of aluminum with a rubber backing on it. Then we finish hooking up our fuel lines. And then we're going to hook up our throttle cable. This thing holds a pretty good memory, so they damn near fall into place, so you just got to get them close. Uh, right there, I didn't even touch it and it fell into place. Hit the trigger once, it locks into its position, and we're good to go. Then we can put the filter holder down into its rubber mounts. And that's it for the intake end, except for putting the air filter on it. We'll pull our adapter out, stick the spark plug back in. You'll also notice next to the spark plug hole there, there's a shiny plug. There was a decompression button in there. Um, on this smaller saw, there was no reason they should have even made it with a decompression button. And some of them did give, give out and cause some problems. So we just eliminate them now on these smaller saws. So now we're going to bolt our muffler back on, get this thing sealed back up, and give it a test run. Hmm. So tell me what you think of these uh, over the bench videos. I know I've said this before, I enjoy making them. This narration part's a little weird for me. But because of the situation and the deal I made with my boss, you know, this is the way it's going to be. I'm not wasting any time at work. I just hang the camera up there in the morning and hit the start button when I want to record. 
and I leave it at that. So a lot of times you just get what you get. Kind of double checking my work here, and then we're going to fire this thing up. So this fuel can here, you know, I'm going to wipe this clean, but you can't really read it. It used to say special sauce, not for rental. Well, damn it. They were grabbing my fuel can off my bench and sending it out with rental saws. And then I wouldn't have a can for repairing equipment. So when I wrote special sauce on there, nobody knew what I had in the can and they left it alone. That worked for about a year and a half. So that's all I got for you on pressure vacuum test in the Husky 545. Thanks for watching. Later.